Hey folks, Quill18 here. Uh, tonight with my buddies in real life, I'm going to be playing Battletech Tabletop for the first time in, oh gosh, uh, 25 years? Uh, it's been a very, very, very long time. Uh, and I'm really excited for it, getting set up, trying to get a bunch of things organized, and hopefully we'll have a lot of fun. One of the things I decided to do is look up to see if there were any apps to help you monitor or track, you know, Battletech stuff a lot easier, you know, calculate die rolls and things for you, because um, we're, you know, going to be a lot of newbies or rusty people, and it might be handy. And in Googling that, I found out there's a full app for running Battletech on your computer and playing it online or playing it solo with bots or some various combination of that. It's something called Megamech. Now, it, this is a uh, free open source, uh, I think it's Bruns in Java, which, you know, pros and cons over there, uh, interpretation of tabletop battle tech. Now, uh, for copyright and trademark things, it's referred to as Megamech, and these giant robots are referred to as Mechs, M-E-K, as opposed to Mechs, M-E-C-H, but, Basically, it's the exact same game. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't necessarily look super pretty, and the interface can be a little bit intimidating at first, but it seems to work really well. Now, again, I, I'm super rusty at everything about Battletech, and I'm still figuring out Mega Mech, but I figured it was worth doing an actual uh, little demo of it here, because some other people might be interested as well. So when you boot it up, you get this screen here. Uh, it is worth noting there is a client option setting over here, and one of the things I kind of recommend is mute sound because it's really annoying. Although it's probably important if you're playing online to get a prompt for when it's your turn so you don't leave everyone else waiting over here. So I'm going to start a new game. This basically makes my um, my computer here is like going to be a host, like a server for this game. It's it's innately kind of networked, but we don't have to do that. We don't have to register our game online. Uh, so basically, unless someone had my direct IP, um, they wouldn't be able to, to connect to, to this game. So basically playing totally solo. So we're start setting that up, and here we go. We've got this lovely and totally clear, not at all confusing interface um, to set up our new game. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to set it up. So there's going to be two teams. And a classic mech lance is four mechs. Um, so I'm going to set up two teams with four mechs each. But on my team, I'm actually only going to control one mech. And I'm going to let a bot run the other three. Because again, still learning. I figure that'll probably be best. I'll have a little bit less to worry about. And it'll limit how badly I can screw up. And do note, there will be some pretty terrible screw ups here. So just be ready for it. So uh, Quilly Teen over here, team one. I'm going to add a bot. And so they've got a button over here and you can you can do it like you can actually run multiple copies of the client as well. So you can sort of do um, hot seat with your buddy, for example, um, by having a second client connect to the same server on the same computer. And then you can swap back and forth for control. So we got princess bot over here was where they call their stuff. There's a bunch of settings to tweak. I'm, I'm not going to mess with it. Um, we're home edge. I don't know if this actually matters for this. Which edge princess will retreat off in case of forth, forced withdrawal? Let's go and defend, uh, define that as like east, although I don't think it's going to matter in this case. Uh, also, if you're playing, if you've got some sort of strategic target to maybe blow up or defend, that might be something that you can list here, but I don't really know. Anyway, I'm going to name this to be good bot. Good bot over here. You know what? We're going to have Brussels bot is actually what uh, my buddy's going to call here. Um, save changes to this configuration. Uh, no, don't don't save it. That's the home edge kind of thing. So we're going to take Brussels bot over here and we're going to move you to team one along with me. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another bot over here and we're going to just call you bad bot. There you go. Bad bot over here. And oh, we got to tweak the team sort of. Oh, yeah, I, I changed things oddly. So we're going to have team one, which is going to be me and Brussels bot, and team two, which is going to be bad bot over here. Now, it does have this, like, coloring system over here for the camos. I don't, I'm not convinced it really takes effect. Like, I would like to be green. I would like my partner to be blue. Did I... Yeah, so I'm green, my partner's blue, and then bad bot, I would like bad bot to be red. But this might, I, I'm not convinced that this is going to adjust what we want. Now, we need to add some units to our teams. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. Um, you can specifically add a combat unit, and um, you can choose 
what's allowed through a variety of ways. We got our game options over here, for example. Uh, we can set a ton of different game options if we want. Uh, the only one I was particularly cared about is I'm going to set the, uh, the the year in 3025, which is basically the most basic level of tech in BattleTech. Um, not having case does make ammo-based bots a lot more fragile. On the other hand, it's kind of fun. So. Uh, or just all I did is I set the uh, the year to 3025. I think by default it says like 3150, which I don't think is actually even a year in, in Battletech lore or canon. I don't think it goes that far. I think that basically means just allow everything. Uh, so we're going to play in 3025 over here. That's going to be fine. So when we add a combat unit, it should filter it to legal ones. It is worth noting there's a bunch of different stuff. This set, um, uh, simulates mechs, tanks... Um, battle armor infantry, uh, the aerospace fighters, although there aren't any in this box set or, or something, so it doesn't show up. So we can filter it to R all. You can see, like, all the bits that would be legal with the current type over here. Oh, yeah, it's um, stuff that's in the introductory box set versus not. IS is inner sphere. So now, probably, if I filtered this to aerospace fighters, we'd get it. Yeah, because those were in additional books and things like that. But we just want to run some mechs from the introductory box set, and, you know, we could choose that. It is worth noting they've got a lot of variations put in here. Uh, they've got the build value points and everything like that. So if I wanted to, say, use this Battle Master, I could click here, I could select it, and then I could also add a blackjack and select it, or hit select and close. And you can see here that Quill 18 would have access to these two mechs over here. I'm going to go ahead and just remove those. I have prepared a list earlier um, based on the default scenario from the um, the fourth edition Battletech, uh, which is to say we're going to have a um, this group of people and another pair that's exactly the same. Um, there we go. So it's going to be, uh, in order of weight, we're going to have a catapult, a trebuchet, a spider, and a commando, each per team. So a couple of light mechs. Um, is this, I think the trebuchet is medium and the catapult would be heavy. I, I'm not entirely sure actually where the lines are drawn, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, not that it really matters over here. So those are going to be the two teams. Now, um, I'm also going to go and select the map. So by default, if you leave surprise, it'll just pick one of these maps and you won't know what it is until the game starts. If you hit random, um, I think as soon as, like after you pick it, hit random, it'll then show you what the map is. So it picks a map at random, but everyone knows what it is ahead of time. With surprise, you have no idea. Generated, we'll do procedurally generated map. Now I decided I'm going to go and play this uh, uh, Flughafen 4 map over here, which I... I, I checked out earlier. It's basically, so this is what, German for an airport, I think. Uh, so there's an airport kind of map over here. And in my scenario that I'm going to imagine is the bad, we're trying to assault an airport or take control of an airport. So my opposing team, bad bot, are going to start in the northwest corner here where the airport terminal and everything is. And we're going to start in the southeast corner over here looking to assault the airport is going to be the plan. So we've got that put in there. What we need to do, you can see the start any over here. I'm just going to change the start and say, I'm going to start in the southeast. Brussels bot, who of course is on my team, you're also going to start in the southeast, and then bad bot, you are going to start in the northwest over here. I'm not going to set any victory conditions though, because I am, um, we're, we're just going to have to smash each other. Winning team is the last team left standing. Uh, you can see already the colors aren't quite right, right? Because this quill is, I set my colors green, these guys are blue. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to run the trebuchet because, of course, trebuchet is the superior siege engine. And I'm going to give Brussels bot the other three over here. So you can see Brussels bot is actually going to turn out to be red. It's like, what? Now, you can set individual camouflage on individual little mechs. So um, I don't know if there's just like a solid color option. Standard camouflage, I guess, might be the way to go. And I just want to give a distinctive color. Tell you what, this checkerboard red we're gonna give to my opponents over here. Uh, and to my partner, I'm just gonna set a, so standard camouflage, um, something very different that comes out as sort of green or, hey, you know what, blue? There we go, as a base color. And tell you what, I'll be I'll be solid blue. So the solid blue mech is me. I'm gonna kill these, these red, yellow, orangey kind of checkered mechs. And then I've got my partner mechs over here. I think that'll be fairly straightforward. So double check that um, everything's been distributed. So we got exactly even teams, except of course that my team is being um, um, held back by the fact that I'm gonna be on it. Uh, we can define our mech palette over here. So I'm gonna be here. Uh, I'll just put a nickname in. Quill 18 is going to be the nickname of my pilot. Um, you can you can tune a few things about your deployment as well if you want, including your skills, but we'll leave everything as is. 
So uh, there we go. Okay. So I'm gonna hit I'm done. If you do have multiple clients connected to the same server, they all have to hit I'm done over here to finish things off. But I'm gonna go ahead to hit that. Now, the game will alternate with um, these sort of text descriptions, just confirming what all the various die rolls are. And then when you hit done again, you're gonna go to the actual map. So first thing we have to do is roll for initiative in the tabletop rules. Higher is better. Uh, so of course, I'm gonna roll worse. So I rolled a five, Brussels bot rolled a six. Um, although it is team-based, so I actually don't know how that interacts, but BadBot rolled an 8. Now, higher initiative is better, and actually means you will move later in the round. It forces your opponents to make all their moves first, so then you can move in response to that. So, um, lower initiative is bad, but you go first. So, turn order for movement, I'm gonna go absolute first, because I think... I think team one, yeah, roll the six, and then within the team, we have sort of a roll off to see who goes for it. I'm not entirely sure how that sub roll works with the team. But in any case, I'm gonna be stuck moving first, which is terrible, but I'm sure it's fine. Okay, and here is the lovely map. Again, you know, the visuals, you know, open source, free project that is honestly for a fairly simple game in the first place. And, you know, this map here I chose isn't necessarily even the most exciting one. You can um, have much larger maps. You can you can stitch maps together. You can do all sorts of things, but this is a fairly tight map over here. So to the top left is the airport we're gonna be attacking. There is a building over here. Uh, you can actually see height three. So these tiles, height three, height two, um, so this is a building that you could you could stand on. You could do various things. If you got jump jets, you can get up there. Um, I think for for regular sort of uh, movement, you can move up one movement uh, height at a time. Uh, all the gray tiles over here are are pavement tiles. So they um, there's some. It's actually weirdly tougher to move on pavement because there's like more skidding and things that can happen. I think uh, most of these tiles over here are going to be just regular vanilla tiles. Although the actual runways over here are also counted to be road, which I, I don't know if that counts as exactly the same as the pavement. The TF reference over there, I'm not sure if that's something that means anything or if it's just internally. Um, to the map generator. We've also got some planted fields over here, but again, I think things are relatively samey. Got a couple of random road tiles over here too. But uh, the highlighted hex is over here where I have to deploy. So I have to deploy right now. I have to deploy first. Fair enough. Um, so just to reference my trebuchet over here, the weapons we've got is we've got a pair of LRM-15, long range missile 15s over here, in uh, the left arm and the right torso. And then we've got three medium lasers uh, spread out through out over here. Um, the you can change the weapon order. So the default one here. I don't know if it's like if it's going left to right or or what the deal is. Um, it seems to me that like maybe we could sort it by weapon range or something like that just to keep them chunked. That might make a little bit of sense. Tell you what, I'll go high to low. We'll have the uh, the missiles first. So I can deploy in any of these squares over here. I do have the uh, the pair of LRM-15 launchers, and so I really would prefer to sort of stay back and just siege people. Um, I'm wondering about deploying here. I mean, fairly far to the north, but on the map edge, so I don't have to worry about people coming behind me. Hopefully that'll be okay. So I'll do that. By default, it faces sort of inverse of whatever your deployment zone is, but if you want, you can hit turn over here and change your facing that way. Oh, yeah, turn again and then do that, and then after that, you're you're back in movement mode over here. So this is deployment. You can just change your mind however you want, and then at some point, you'll hit deploy. So we're going to do that. Um, can I, like, flip back to the map at any point? Anyway, we'll have this. Uh, we rolled high for initiative here, which is good. See, team rolled an 11. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So um, the team... Team one versus team two roll off to see who goes first. And then inside of a team, I think there's a secondary roll to see within there who goes first. So um, Brussels bot ended up with a four overall, but we still have the winning team. So Brussels bot won't go before bad bot. So bad bot is first, forced to go first. We alternate between teams um, and we will go last for the movement here, which is really good. Actually, I was freaked out about rolling poorly, but I didn't realize that was the deployment phase um, rolling. So there you go. So the bots are alternating, moving back and forth. Sometimes the bots will take a while to calculate their movement. Brussels bot is actually taking a little bit longer here um, as they try to work some stuff out. Wow, that spider's really running far ahead quite quickly. Um, you can see it still has the red outline over here from... I clearly didn't set the... Or I don't know how to set the team color properly. I would I would wanted, uh, again, Brussels bot to be in blue, my own color to be in green, and my opponent color to be in red, but it didn't seem to take, so I'm clearly setting things incorrectly over here. Anyway, 
So, uh, I am the last person to move. We get a good in uh, information as to what is going on here. Uh, Commando over here is actually hiding behind this building. Commando can be a very dangerous bot. Right click and click view over here. If we take a look at its weapon system, it's got two racks of short range missiles and they do ludicrous amounts of damage. Just sick. Uh, I guess that won't go back. I'll have to go and reopen my own, uh, my own view over here. Um, so it's really bad. Now, if you click on one of the weapons over here in our own character sheet, we actually get the range outlines pretty good. It's a little clearer maybe for the lasers. So this is short range, medium range, long range. So the further away something is, like based on the range, short range, there's no penalty to hit. And then you get increasing penalties to hit the further out something is. Uh, some weapons, for example, our missile systems actually have a minimum range. With a minimum range, you get a penalty to hit based on how close they are. So the LRMs are kind of funny in that they only have one exact range that falls within short. So they have a minimum range of six and a short range of one to seven. So if someone's exactly seven hexes away, that's the only place where they fall within short range and have no penalty to hit. And the penalty, if you've got it within min range, it goes, so it, it's more to think the increased difficulty rather than a penalty. So it's plus one difficulty, plus two, plus three, plus four. Uh, medium range is plus two difficulty and long range is plus four difficulty. I think I might be getting it wrong because again, I don't really know what I'm doing. But what's nice about this situation right now is I'm last to move. Can I somehow get someone within my short range missile situation? Well, we'll see. So I'm gonna leave this, this little highlight on with uh, this, this unit selected and I'm gonna consider my movement. So if you click anywhere, It'll calculate, okay, we're gonna walk this way. Walk this way! And you can keep clicking. You can actually click beyond your maximum range. Um, and you can keep sort of queuing things up. If you wanna reset, you can hit escape. This might be another key, I don't know. And then you can just click. And what it'll do, it'll try to like, you know, work out there. So these blue tiles, this is how far I could get by just walking. If we go to general, my walking speed is a five. So I can go that far by just walking. Um, the yellow tiles are a run. And then gray is you just can't get here uh, right now. The difference between walk and run is you can't run backwards. You can walk backwards and that's fine. Um, you have to choose when you start your movement, you have to declare if you're walking or running. Although with the, um, with the tool here, it will automatically select walk or run appropriately depending on the distance you're looking for. Um, for yourself, if you walk, so if you stand still, um, you won't get any penalties to hit and you won't generate any heat. If you walk, I believe you get a plus one difficulty to hit and you generate one uh, one heat. If you run, I think it's plus two, plus two. Uh, if you jump, jumping um, will give you huge modifiers for distance, but uh, always generates more heat and always required to do at least three tiles uh, and three points worth of heat. And there's things like that. I might be wrong about the specifics here, um, which you know is obviously bad because you're trying to optimize your stuff. But the, the point is that you want to avoid running if you can get somewhere with just a walk movement. Now, you do get a bonus to your own defense. You become harder to hit the further you move. Now, the amount you are harder to hit is based exactly on the number of tiles you move, not how many movement points were spent. It is worth noting, for example, that if we were to move here, then turn and go there, you can see turning for each change in facing costs one. So it costs us one to move forward, a second point to turn, and then the third point to move over here. Same thing if I do this, it goes up to five. And if we do this, then it will start running. Um, turning while running requires piloting checks to not fall over. Uh, so there's, there's things like that. But in this example, even though I spent five movement points getting here, it would only count as having moved three hexes to get right over here. And the break points for difficulty be hit is if you move three plus, five plus, and something else plus. Anyway, all that being said, if I were to move here, for example, that's quite nice because this is, this would let me move five tiles, which would give me the best defense against being shot like for this. It's only walking, so I wouldn't generate much heat. I wouldn't get that much in terms of a penalty to hit. And yeah, I just put both the spider and the catapult over here within the ideal short range of my LRMs. Um, I could even consider firing my medium lasers, but they would be long range within that. And then I would just be generating heat for probably a pretty poor chance to hit. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this move and then um, just hit go from there. So I will lock in my move, boom, 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 boom. So now we're in the firing phase of the game. Um, so what we have over here, we have a little numerical indicator. So on each mech, the top number is the penalty to hit uh, as a result of their movement. So this um, 
catapult over here, if I click on it, start targeting it, we can see the chance to hit. So your gunnery skill, that's your base difficulty to hit. Lower skill is better because it's your target number. You roll two dice, two six-sided dice, 2d6, and what you want to do is you want to meet or exceed the target number. The target number or difficulty starts with your gunnery skill, which is four. I walked, so that's a plus one to the difficulty. My target, in this case, which if it was this catapult, um, uh, is plus one difficulty because it moved three to four hexes and it also did a jump which is also plus one difficulty over there so you can see there's a total of plus three to difficulty and that's what the plus three stands for over here whereas if i were to target the spider it's plus four because they actually moved further away it's all it, it, i still walked my target still jumped but it moved further so it would be that much harder to get so if you add everything up my target number would be an eight which is about a 41 percent chance to hit on a 2d6 the seven's quite a bit easier because on 2d6 seven's the most common so we're sitting at 58%. I mean, it's still not easy, but it seems to be the most viable shot. Now, those are with the LRM-15s. If I switch over to the medium lasers, notice it doesn't change the plus three number. Oh, the bottom number is, by the way, is how far away they are from us. So seven hexes away uh, or 10 hexes away. And this uh, commando is untargetable because I don't have line of sight. Um, the medium lasers over here, even though this shot becomes a lot harder against the catapults, an 11 because long range adds plus four difficulty. It doesn't put the plus four on top here um, because that's not, because I guess the range overlays. There might be an option for it. I don't know. Anyway, to me, it looks like the medium lasers aren't worth shooting. You can toggle by hitting next target over here. It'll cycle between all the targets and you can just see like what the numbers. 11 is our best hope and that ain't so good. So let's go back over to the LRMs. And again, we can next target through here and you can see the easiest person to shoot for us is the catapult over here. Now I might want to still shoot someone else. For example, I might want to try to shoot the spider. Spider's a very light mech. It's gonna be easy to take out. Maybe the best thing to do is to tr try to take out the spider right away. But I mean, that's a big percentage chance. We're losing 17% chance to hit by trying to target the spider. I don't like it. Now, you can split your attacks. Um, your first, uh, whoever you, you attack first is your primary target. Um, so you, you've got your role as is. If you then queue up a second target. So let's say I want to, I'm going to declare, I'm going to fire my LRM 15, my first one at this catapult. So I'm going to lock that in. Done. You can still change your mind at this point. Um, I think. Maybe, maybe you can't anymore. I don't know if there's an undo. Um, and then if I were to click on my, my spider over here, you can see there's a plus one extra modifier from second target. So I'm going to go... Yeah, actually, that's an interesting question. Can I undo this declaration? Because normally you declare already fired. I actually don't know. Cancel? That's a good question. Oh, okay, there we go. There's, there's our undo. We cancel that declaration. So I might, even though it's harder to hit, might want to go on the spider. I think I was saying that because it's light and it'll be easier to take off. But yeah, that's a huge chance, a huge difference in, in to hit. So we'll unload both LRM-15s at the catapult. So that's done. Now the medium laser is kind of poop to hit. One of the biggest things in Battletech is managing your heat. Medium lasers generate three heat per. We're already at 11. Now that includes, I used one heat to move each LRM over here, the LMR15 generate 15 heat each. So that would set me at 11. I have 10 heat sinks. I sink 10 heat per turn. So as is, I'll still generate one flat heat. Now, being at one total heat isn't so bad. As your heat goes up, you will get more and more penalties to hit. Uh, you will lose the ability to move. You will have to, at some point, start making saves against... Um, um, having your mech automatically shut down, having your ammo start to explode because of excessive heat. And if ever you reach 30, it's 100% you are forced to shut down right away. So it doesn't seem to make much sense to fire these medium lasers because the chance to hit is so poor, we're just going to generate heat for nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit done with the two LRMs locked in. So I'm going to do that, and then what we do is all the attacks get re resolved. It's important to note in Battletech Tabletop, all attacks get resolved simultaneously. So even if, you know, the, you, they get resolved based on, you know, initiative order or whatever. Same thing with the weapons firing declarations. Whoever had the best initiative declares their fire last. And then you go and resolve everything. So um, mine is probably going to be at the end over here. But do note, even if someone had targeted me and done lethal damage to me or destroyed one of my weapons, I would still get to fire with everything as is anyway because it's it's simultaneous. So going over here, we'll uh, we'll just we'll just note where we're getting hit. So um, catapult here, the catapult fired against me. It fired um, its LRM-15s at me. It missed on the first shot. It needed a nine to hit me. It rolled a five. So, um, but on the second shot, again, needed a nine, and of course it hit, because, you know, <sighs> AIs always have really good luck, it seems like. 
So when you fire LRM-15s, uh, first you roll to hit, and then there's a separate roll to see how many missiles hit. It's just 2d6 on a, on a grid. Accuracy and everything like that has no effect. The amount of missiles that get hit from an LRM swarm is fairly random. So you hit with five missiles um, over here and uh, rolled the right arm as the location, so we took five damage to the right arm. I now have five armor left in that arm. And then there's some more interaction between the other bots. We're going to go all the way down here for my trebuchet over here, firing the LRMs at the catapult. I needed a seven. I, I hit with, for nine missiles. Now, with LRMs, you take the missiles and you chop them up into groups of five. So with a total of nine missiles that hit, that's going to be a group of five and then a group of four for the leftover. And you roll separate locations for each one. Um, so we hit his left arm. Now, he's a heavier bot than me, so he's going to have a little bit more armor. So he's got eight left over there. But I also hit his center torso and with, um, with a critical. Now, normally... Um, you start doing criticals once you get through someone's armor and then you start hitting their internal structure that can generate criticals But there's a few other ways to uh, just get lucky and generate some crits So we did a, crit a possible critical but a follow-up on the critical table rolled a seven Which is no effect. So nothing actually happened from this. So even there was a chance that something crazy happened It didn't my second missile salvo also hit I rolled sevens both time and needed seven both times And of course most common thing second salvo also hit with nine missiles. That's just the way it was um, or do you not roll a second time? Maybe, maybe what you ended up as your roll is your missile cluster. So you're higher your roll, the more missiles hit. I don't think that's true though. I think this is just coincidence. Yeah, because he rolled a nine, he got five missile hits. Yeah, it's just coincidental. Um, and both those hit the center torso, which is good. So that's actually three total hits to the center torso, but the catapult's pretty heavy. Even after all that, it still has some armor remaining. Um, the catapult, however, has taken more than 20 damage this phase. Whenever Emek takes more than 20 damage total in a phase, it has to do a piloting roll. Now, it doesn't matter if it like was hit for 20, 40, 60, through multiple attacks, through whatever, it's just one roll. Um, and he had to do a piloting check over here. He just needs a six, rolls an eight, so he doesn't fall over. All right. And then there's the physical attack phase. Now, um, if... There's got to be a way to flip back. I don't know. If you're in base-to-base -base combat, if you're touching another mech in combat, you can do a physical attack after the weapons fire phase, which is the case for the the two spiders, it looks like. Bad Bot and Brussels Bot both have spiders in base-to-base -base combat, and they're kicking at each other. Uh, we hit the, MO, uh, MAs, uh, the enemy um, uh, spider here, doing six damage to the left leg, which brings it to zero armor. And then uh, the reverse is the enemy spider failed to hit our... Wait, sorry. No, I'm doing this wrong. Shoot! The bad bot kicked Brussels bot. Brussels bot failed to kick back. Oh, that's too bad. Um, and you also have to do piloting checks. Whenever you get kicked or whenever you miss a kick, you have to do a piloting check. So Brussels bot actually had to make two, but luckily they both succeeded. Okay. And then we got our heat phase information here. So if we look at ourselves, our trebuchet here has gained 11 heat, sank 10 of it, and is now at one heat. That's not too bad. If we uh, go an alpha strike with all our weapons at the same time, it's gonna be brutal though, heat wise. All right, another initiative phase, which is being weird. The important thing is we are going to be last to move, which is brilliant. So the other bots are gonna go ahead and make their movement and then we'll get to do ours. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go and put a cut in here because this video has gone on long enough, but I will continue, I'll finish this battle in the next video, which should be easy to do in the next video now that we're done explaining a lot of the things. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'll have links in the, the doobly-doo for where you can download this, again, free sort of open source program. Uh, not the simplest to understand, and again, I'm sort of gonna suck at it in general because both the UI and not knowing the real Battletech rules uh, very well and also being strategically incompetent, but we're gonna see if we can't win this fight. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.